Mrs. Brightside is brought to you by Audible, and you can go to audibletrial.com slash Mrs. Brightside to get your 30-day free trial. And it's a great handy little app, especially if you don't like to read but don't want to be stupid. Just have someone read these books to you. And that's audibletrial.com slash Mrs. Brightside for your 30-day free trial to hear books instead of read them. Be that boo. It's Mrs. Brightside. Uh, open up the curtains. Look outside. What's outside? It's Mrs. Brightside. Fuck it. Yeah. I'm a widow. I can chew into the microphone if I fucking want. <laughs> See, I hit record because I knew it was going to be funny. So, yeah, yeah that, that's well, going to be the intro now. So, Yahoo. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, fuck you guys if you don't like me chewing into the microphone. Okay, good. <laughs> Well, guys, um, this is Mrs. Brightside, where the glass is always half full. And today I have comedian Aiden Bart. <laughs> Yay! So, Lucretia. Uh, yeah. You have the best um, snacks here. <laughs> yeah, guys, if you want to be a guest on Mrs. Brightside, I do provide snacks because I have manners. <laughs> mm, yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, thank you for having me. Oh, thank you for coming in. Mm-hmm. It's funny. We just literally met last week. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I was like a lot back room. Yeah. I know, and you let me go up, and I, you know, and I didn't even have to wait outside, and I was, like, so grateful, because I, the only reason I've never gone up there is because I, I'm like, I can't wait outside for that long. Yeah. Um, and it's just, like, it, it's, it's brutal, man. But, it's brutal. Yeah, like, that stage is just icon- iconic. Yeah. It's just yeah. a brutal industry. Yeah. You know, you never get a break. Yeah. That's why I do a positivity podcast, because this is, this is therapy. How this long is, have you been doing this? Uh, since uh, January. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. Awesome. Are you real into, like, positive psychology and stuff, or what? Yeah, so, um, yeah, since we, we've just met, you don't know. I, I don't know uh, anything about I, you. Yeah, I'm like, I went to college. Uh, I have a master's degree in psychology. Like, no way. I studied serial killers initially, but then um, went into sports psychology, because yeah. I was like, you know, a little happier. I love yeah. sports psychology. Yeah. It's so interesting, and that's where the CBT, uh, Cognitive Behavioral, behavioral Therapy. Behavioral yeah. Therapy. I love that CBT. Yeah. Okay, so I have a book. Okay, yeah. so I have an yeah. Audible collection. I, I have, like... Oh, and this podcast is sponsored by Audible. No so way! If you go really? to audibletrial.com slash Mrs. Brightside, you will uh, get a 30-day free trial. Uh, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Everybody can join Audible. <laughs> yeah. I have a book about, about with sports yeah. psychology... Do you read books on sports psychology? Uh, not in a while. I'm more like been in the comedy mode, but I'm like, oh, I'll be interested. I'm like, and I can use my Audible credits. Well, there's yeah. one. Yeah. Um, that I love. It's by a coach. I'm gonna I'm gonna look up the yeah. name of it right now, because you know. Yeah. Here. I will vamp. So yeah, like um, that was that's what I would do if I uh, didn't make it as a comedian. Because the funny thing is, as you heard, uh, you've heard my set. I have a black name. I could not get a job. How did that happen? <laughs> well, How, you could not get a job. Lucretia. <laughs> it was so funny. <laughs> I, I was going on all these, inter- like, if I got an interview, I would go in and I would be the only white person there. And it was like, oh, I get what's happening. And it would be so funny. You're like, oh, well, okay, I'm not getting this job. I'm not getting this job. And so I started doing stand-up which is what I always wanted to do because I had to do a promo model job because with a headshot, they knew what I looked like. Yeah. Um, and my boss was a horror movie actress and realized I wanted, I was always wanted to do comedy and she was just super supportive. She's like, yeah, go to these open mics, do this. So great. And then it all fell in. It's like, you know, Are you enjoying yourself. Yeah. Great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, okay. So this thing, yeah. this is, it's not a sports psychology book. It's yeah. a book by a yeah. sports coach. Yeah. Called Relentless. Relentless oh, by wow. Tim Grover. Tim Grover, who okay. coaches like Kobe Bryant, yeah. and, like all the top basketball. And this guy is like, I don't care if you throw up. I don't care if you you just, you know like and, and like yeah. that kind of work ethic. Like sports man. I mean, ooh, those people. Yeah, like uh, I grew up. I was a gymnast <clears throat> up until I was like a teenager. Oh, shut uh, up! So, really? Yeah. Oh, that's hard. Like, yeah, sports. So sports was always a big part of my life, and that's the reason I have the work ethic to do this. Uh-huh. I don't know. Did you play any sports growing up? Yeah. No. Yeah. No, but I did yeah. dance. Yeah. Oh, dance. I was is a musical sport. theater person. Yeah. So yeah, uh, you know, but that that did require a lot of work. Yeah, and that's the thing is, you, you know, whether it's sports or something like that, anything that required you to be disciplined yeah. at a young age, I just see is all the difference in people. 
Yeah. And because yeah, a lot of my friends that weren't exposed to sports or things like that, it's yeah. like you know they don't know how to self discipline. Yeah. You know? Got to you know yeah. yeah for sure. But cool. So we're actually here to talk about something uh, much uh, more sad, but the bright side of it rather than sports. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> you recently lost your boyfriend. I lost yeah. my boyfriend yeah. of five years. Yeah. You know, which, you know, I mean, you know, in gay years already, <laughs> that's like five centuries, you know. Yeah. I mean, lesbians, it's, like, it's not five, it's like five seconds. <laughs> but, you know, so I was with him for five years and uh, he was older than me, and it just all happened at once. Like, uh, March, at the beginning of March, he had lymph nodes that got big. Um, and so I took oh, him man. into the ER, and uh, from there, it was just, okay, you have stage four cancer, or, or you have cancer, well, let's hope it's like lymphoma. No, it's let's lung cancer, which is oh. the worst kind. Oh, let's hope it didn't metastasize to everywhere. Yeah, no, it's metastasized to your lungs and your kidney. I mean, it was just oh, like, man. it was just a, a brutal three months. Yeah. And then, so he passed away in early June and uh, now it's mid-August. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, it's just like, as you say, just a whole lot at once. I mean, but I guess, I mean, trying to think of the bright side of that would be like, you know, at least you didn't have a lengthy battle with it as like right. some people, all the chemo. Cause I know, I mean, I, my grandfather suffered with emphysema for years. And yeah. so when he finally passed, we were just like so grateful because he suffered so much. Wow. Like, and it was like, it sucks for us, but I can't imagine for him. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, was, so yeah, there's always that. It's like it, they, you know, considering that was quick. Like, yeah, you know, it could have been like years. You know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, like you know, I yeah. actively, I'm actively yeah. trying to find good things about yeah. this situation. Yeah, because uh, there's no changing it. No. So I can sit and you know feel bad for myself all I want. Actually, he came to me in a dream. Did I tell you this? No. Yeah. Three days after he died. He showed up in my dream. I like to... I, I don't know if I believe in spirits or whatever. I believe in ghosts. Yeah? I've, seen, I've had uh, ghost experiences. Like, uh, especially when my aunt died when we were a little what kid. What happened? Well, my dad, he was very angry about his sister's death. And he punched uh, a wall when we were at his house. And, you know, we're little kids. Like, what the hell is happening? Like, and then all of a sudden, the front door opens of his apartment. Um, all the cabinets start opening and closing. His no. cat's freaking out. Did that really happen? Yeah. Like, Lucretia. And, oh yeah, my little brother was there and my, our older half brother, you know, and our dad. Really? And then it was just like, wow, she's pissed at you for being, you know, like doing that in front of your kids. <laughs> oh. And it was like, whoa. Wow. Yeah. Well, I hope. Yeah. So. Maybe it was him. Yeah. You know what? I yeah. I like yeah. to, th I mean, that, that'd be great. I would like to think that. And I think when it comes to something yeah. like that, I mean, from your experience, yeah. I guess you experienced it firsthand. I haven't experienced it firsthand other than like weird things, right? Yeah. So, I, you know, I can choose to believe it or not. I guess I'll choose to believe it because it brings me some comfort. That's, you know, yeah. just kind of go with it. Well, that's what faith is. Yeah. 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 So, uh, anyway, it came to me in a dream. Yeah. Three days after he died. And he, he gave me a hug. And then he was like, you know what, baby? Uh, no matter how much you cry, I can't be here to hug you. And I woke up. Like, I woke up from that. And um, I was, like, hyperventilating, kind of, you know? And I looked over, and he wasn't there. And I'm like, you know what? Like, he's right. He's yeah. so right. So, basically... You know, he's saying you can handle this however way you want, but it's not going to change. It's unchangeable. So, other than killing myself, I just don't know what the... Op I mean... No. Yeah. And, like, I had to make a hard... Okay, like, thoughts of suicide yeah. did go through my head while he was going through the cancer. Yeah, and too, like... You know, that is normal. We all have those thoughts and feelings. And, you know, especially now, I mean, when a guy steals a plane and uh, get to kill himself and drives it in. I mean, we're in a dark time right now. So it's, it's you know, at least, you know, again, going on the bright side, you know, you're not alone in those thoughts. And especially, yeah. you know, when things are so personal. 
And it's just like, but, you know, one thing you've done really well is a lot of suicidal people is uh, turn to comedy. I mean, you were yeah. set last night and last week was like, you know, all about, you know, this situation. And that's the thing is you know, comedy equals tragedy plus time. Yeah. 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 So mm. I'm lucky in that yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah. Because your joke about ghosted, I'm like, even like this material you just told <laughs> me, I was like, really goes with it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah. 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 I don't know. Yeah. I just have to make a decision. Yeah. On whether suicide was... He and I had a discussion, yeah. actually, because he told me... Okay, like, so I... Look, Richa, I don't... Yeah. you. I know you never met him, but we were really, really close. We really yeah. connected. Like, real... It was not a thing of convenience. It was not a thing... You know what I mean? It was just, like, we, you know, we did everything together. We went to... Like, you know, I, I do, like, comedy shows around yeah. the country... He would always go with me. Aww. You know, yeah. uh, he organized, like, I have, like, a couple, like, other businesses or whatever. He helped organize all those. We spent every day together, probably for five years. And it was just, and he and I had a had an argument because, you know, he was like, hey, because it was so scary. He was like, if I go, you have to promise not to, you know, kill yeah. yourself. And I actually yeah. said to him, I was like, you don't get to determine that because you're the one with cancer and you get to go whatever the hell you want and I'm stuck here cleaning this mess. So you don't get to determine that. And he was like, I get it. But if you look at, you know, like, and I, but then the bright side yeah. of the, the cancer, if, you know, was, man, did people come out to support? It was just incredible. Yeah. It really was. Well, this community here in comedy is very supportive. I know that a lot of like news outlets and social media and stuff will like, lead you to believe that comedy is not is not inclusive and not been supportive. And I'm like, that's not true. I mean, I'm watching the history of comedy, and that's never really been <coughs> true. Comedy has always been the place for people to come and feel supported, like especially when you're dealing with real problems yeah. like that. And it's just. Because we all get it. We wouldn't be here if we all didn't have something like that in our life. Yeah. Because, I mean, you don't get to be a comedian without a few skeletons in your closet. Yeah. yeah. Like, the way it was yeah. just... I mean, yes, they yeah. were emotionally there for me over over the telephone. Yeah. But, like, this one comes out. It's like, hey, I used to work for the foundation oh, at yeah. the USC. I'm going to connect you to that referral. Hey... This guy I know is a doctor who runs a nutritional company. Let me correct you. Like, yeah. all these people showed up. And, you know, people care. Well, and too, that's the bright side of it, is you realize what an impact that was and that people care. And that, all, you know, it, you really felt the support that you may not have ever noticed without it. Yeah. Yeah. Well. It was, just, I mean, it was, very, and then Michael, right until the end, yeah. was so grateful and and um, I'm so grateful for yeah. all those people, and they um, and I, you know when my mom, who's been uncomfortable with the whole gay yeah. thing, uh, she's very conservative Christian Korean, uh, and she really stepped out of her comfort zone, um, and so I looked at the, those things and I'm like, you know, if I just willingly just like. It, I never really considered suicide yeah. seriously, like, but like, if I did take myself out of the equation, it would hurt all these people, yeah. and, you know. Yeah, that's what it showed you. It's like, it sort of brought you out of that, was being like, wait, all these people do still care, even if he's not here. And, you know, he'll always be here in a way. And what's interesting about that is, like you say, we spent five years together every day, you know. That's that's a long time, and you know, as you say, in in gay years. <laughs> but like in, to a lot of people, it's like five years together that strong. It's like, do you really think that you know? It's like that's perfect. So you know, in an essence, it really wasn't sullied at all. Like it could be if it kept going, and you could think about it in that way of like, wow, I got to have this perfect. And almost like Ted and how I met your mother. Like, and when you realize at the end, the mother has been dead the whole time, and you're like. Wow, but he had this long, you know, perfect little marriage. You know, it was a perfect marriage for what it was. Or, you know. It was, it was, um. I've never, um. I really did, I really learned about love from, from him. 
Yeah. I knew, I figured out what that, the meaning of that was, I feel like. Uh, I was in several long-term relationships before him where I was like, okay, you know, cool. Like, this was not, you know, this was something very different. And I'm yeah. so glad that I was uh, able to be there for him uh, through his last uh, days. Yeah. Yeah. And there's that, too, because, like, you can only use that, you know, going forward. I mean, you've, you've experienced it. Like, to be honest, it's like there... You've probably experienced one of the worst things that could ever happen, so it can only only be uphill from there. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. ironically, uh, I I feel I have a new self confidence yeah. after having dealt with it because those three months were so, ooh so hard, yeah. and you know now that it's over, and I'm like looking at it, I'm like, you know what, like. I can honestly say I handled it the best that I could. And I'm like, hey, if I were watching from the outside and I saw the way that I was handling it, I would respect myself. I could res I could see, huh, that's a respectable fella. He was loyal and strong and therefore his partner very loving. That's a respectable person. So there's a new level of self-respect that I have for myself from dealing with this. So it's interesting. Yeah, because that's the thing is, um, you know, if, if you can deal with that and do as well as you have, you can deal with anything. I mean, because, yeah, it's like, what's worse than losing the person you love? Nothing. Yeah. What are you going to do to me now? Yeah. Yeah. You know. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah like, <laughs> that's the thing. That's us as comedians. It's like, we're always trying to think of, it's like, how can we make this funny? How can we think about this in another way? And then that's what this whole thing is about. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, after that, I think, uh, I do, th you know, as yeah. with, like, positive psychology, I think, um, it was really helpful to, um, look at happiness and, uh, look at happiness as a, as a, as a, as a, as a, as a something that you have to work for. And not something that just happens. So. Yeah, because a lot of people, like, you say, what do you want? And they're just like, I want to be happy. And it's just like, well, what does that mean to you? Because it's something to every, you know, it, yeah. it's a construct. It's not, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it was, yeah. you know, it's, it's to take that on. I mean, like, right after Michael passed, yeah. I was like, I, I'm not, I don't really like being stagnant. I'm, you know, I'm just not. Yeah. A sit down and sit, be still type of person. I know. I come from a long line of butch women. We don't. <laughs> Can you build cabinets? Yes. Are you a lesbian? No, I oh. wish I would be the best lesbian there is, but no, sadly, sadly, I like dudes and yeah, like, manlier than me. So there's like five choices. Ha! <laughs> yeah. In Los Angeles, yeah. yeah. Good luck with that. They're all in their skinny jeans and their. It's like, I don't want a girl. <laughs> you know, yeah. have you ever ha been with a girl? No. Okay. Yeah, I just, honestly, I barely have women friends. Uh -huh. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I just, well, you know. I'm like, oh, sorry. They're half, uh, more than half of the population. <laughs> it's good to know what you want. Yeah. I, I've never been with a woman. Yeah, exactly. Ever. Yeah, yeah and I, I and None I won't. None of us have ever been with a woman in this room. No. my dog, Zephyr. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> is he gay? Uh, no, she's it's a she. Oh, no. Um, I know. I, she looks like a boy. Everyone thinks she's a boy. I, I, I thought Zephyr, you know. Yeah. I'm like, it's a very gender neutral name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah. yeah. So. I'm like, Red Hot Chili Peppers. <laughs> That's where her name comes from. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. But, um,. Yeah, so where were we? I'm like, we're all about, we're too strong to cry and, and make it, you know, which is awesome. And too, it's like... What, what do you mean? Yeah, um, just like some people are just overly emotional nowadays, especially. And it's mm. just like, it. to me, the fact that, that you were so strong, you're like, I'm not going to cry about it. I'm going to, you know... Well, I do cry about it. Yeah, you know, but you're going more like trying to think of it in other ways. Not just like some people would be like in their sweatpants every day with yeah. their ice cream. But get, just getting out there and, um, you know, going with it yeah. every day and, and do writing jokes about it. Like, yeah. yeah. Is, uh, does your upbringing have a lot to do with that? Yeah. Uh, writing yeah. jokes? Or just, uh, you know, channeling your emotions in another way. Uh, 
let's see, does 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 the way I was brought yeah. up have something to do with that? Uh yeah, because I know at least how I can explain it is in my family oh, humor. Crap. Sorry. <laughs> Don't call me. That's the first time that's ever happened that's on this show. Should I, uh, yeah, I was should like, I turn it off? Try. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, I'm like, you get another snack. Ha? Oh, goes, great. Yeah. Awesome. I haven't been yeah. chewing this. Yeah. I'm going to chew it. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, like, so in my family, we always deflected stuff with humor, especially because like, we dealt with a lot of crazy stuff. You know, my dad was severely mentally ill, so it's like... Eventually, you just have to laugh at it. Yeah. Like, but, yeah, so I was like, I don't know if that w it had anything to do with the way that you've been able to handle this. Because, yeah, I mean. I mean, you yeah. know, I've been through some yeah. shit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, if you, I mean, if you want to name. Yeah. Like, a check mark mm -hmm. of every platform that a social justice warrior yeah. wants to fight for. <laughs> I mark every, I'm yeah. gay. Korean, I was brought here undocumented. Yeah. Uh, that was a struggle. I didn't speak any English. I was like obese, and then I had an eating disorder about that. And then, uh, uh, you know, my grandmother worked as a kitchen helper for five yeah. seventy five an hour. You know, and we, you know, lived in low income housing and the ghettos of San Francisco. I mean, it was just yeah. like. So I guess you could say that I, humor has yeah. always been a way for me to defend myself. I guess. Yeah, because that's the thing you learn, you know, and that's the thing with a lot of these comics. It's like a lot of us started very early on. That's why I do that joke about my first joke, because it's like, yeah, you you have to learn when you're weird or different or dealing with stuff that kids shouldn't be dealing with. Mm -hmm. um, it's like, hey, you know, I got to figure out a way to handle it. Yeah. 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 Huh. I think also uh, I've always had a lot of respect for strategy. Yeah. I love strategy. And so... I think it does apply to emotional stress. Like I love CBT, like, yeah. like you um, yeah. practice. You know, I love that. Do you ever, have you ever heard, heard of uh, NLP, neuro linguistic programming? Oh uh, yes, yeah. I am a big neuro linguistic mm. programmer, and so I uh, did like reframing yeah. exercises, and because it's like unchangeable. Like, what am I going to do? Like, uh, Yeah, and, and, and like you say, neuro-linguistic programming is more like a rewiring of you, which is a great something, something like, you know, Adam Carolla even always talks about is what he did, and just not in so many words, which is, is interesting. Because, yeah, it is like, like you say, what am I going to do? But you found positive outlets and ways to deal with it without, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was it was a yeah, passing thought. Exactly, I wasn't yeah. actually, you know, yeah. but, but for... The first month there, for the first month and yeah. a half, two months, I was so scared. I was just so terrified at the prospect of losing Michael that it was, it was, it was, oof, you know. Yeah. But uh, it's so it's so funny because like, you know, actually going through the experience is easier than what you imagine it. And I feel yeah. like there is some kind of like spiritual guidance because for some reason, from the beginning of the relationship when I got together with Michael, I was like, hey, if something happened to you, I would freak out. And you was like, baby, nothing's going to happen to me. Yeah. And I was like, I don't know. I always had that instinct. And I mentioned that at least like a couple times a week during the entire duration of our relationship. Wow, yeah. It was a running theme. Uh, and then this happened and, uh, yeah. Yeah. And, and that is sadly one of the things, cause I know I'm into older men, uh, myself. <laughs> yeah, so it's great. like, it is one of those things that you start to do the math, especially if you want kids, you're like, well, if they're this much older than me, like when, well, like, will they be dead when our kids are like this? You know, cause this is what girls think yeah. about. <laughs> but yeah, I, I totally like, thought about it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, but yeah, it's like, you do have those crazy thoughts. And like you say, that did happen. And it's not a crazy yeah, thought. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. You know. And now a word from our sponsors. If you have a career in the arts, wouldn't you rather be working on your craft than trying to build your own website? That's why RadPortfolios.com creates affordable, custom websites for artists. It's super easy and totally all-inclusive. When you book a role, have a show coming up, or get new headshots you want to put up on your website, 
you just send the info over and your website gets updated at no additional charge. Starting at just $99 a month, they take care of your hosting, domains, security certificates, and just about any update you want to make your site. Use code BRIGHTSIDE, that's one word, for half off your website startup. Radportfolios.com, affordable custom websites for artists so you can get back to getting booked. And like you say, spiritual, and you mentioned your mother earlier was, you know, a conservative Christian and, you know... Do you, you know, <clears throat> subscribe to any of that? Like, if you don't mind me asking, you know, do you believe in heaven and, you know, maybe that Michael's in a better place at least some sort of way? And and because to me that is comforting. And I know there's a lot of people like whether you don't prescribe to all of the th things, but yeah. the idea of heaven and better place and it's yeah. it's it's um yeah it's comforting yeah. And I actually yeah. have a friend that's a medium. Oh, wow. Like a personal yeah. friend who is a medium slash psychic. And uh, she was like, you can call me a crazy bitch right now, honey, but mm -hmm. Michael's sitting right here. And I was oh, like, wow. oh, really? Yeah. Okay, do tell. And um, I actually... Did I tell you about this? Yeah. Um, so when that happened, yeah. I was in a public place and I was on the phone with my friend. And... He said Michael saying that you guys had a lot of drama, which we didn't have that much drama. I mean, we didn't have that much drama. But like, he's saying you guys had drama and, and I'm would like, it have been love? a gay couple. Isn't it all about the drama? No, it's not. <laughs> and that's it. No, and I will not. I will not. No, absolutely not. We were yeah. the worst gay couple. Oh. We were the gay couple that nobody could get anything from. You're like we Matt can't. Balmer and his husband where they're just like so just beautiful and pretty with their kids and no drama. I know. And you're like, no, well, I mean, you're, you're, you're a unicorn. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. we can't decorate either. <laughs> we can't decorate. We can't paint. We can't pick out colors. See, that's why I'm the worst lesbian ever. Uh, you know, you, I don't like women and I can uh, decorate. This, this is beautiful. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's awesome. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, he, uh, yeah, we were the worst couple. <laughs> we would go to Marshalls. We were the same size. We're like, these jeans are $9. Does it fit you? It fits me. We're getting it. That's got to be the best thing ever, though. It's like, we you were don't like even have to have that big you know, closet. You don't spend a lot of money. Yeah. Like, yeah. I didn't even throw away any yeah. of his clothes. I kept them all. Yeah. Well, you know. they all fit. Why bother? Yeah. Yeah. I'm pragmatic. Yeah. I was like, I like that because I'm cheap too. I'm like, oh, yeah. I love yeah. cheap yeah. things, you know? Of course, like, but, but like this place does mm. not look cheap. It looks oh, very no. expensive. Yeah, like luckily Ikea stuff looks nice. It's very <laughs> yeah. nice. Yeah. Everybody should come and report yeah. at, at, at the Creature Studio. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, that's what happened. Yeah. And uh, Michael... Um, was always, you know, very supportive of my comedy career. Uh, he actually, I run a show at the Laugh Factory. Um, it's an LGBT show. I've been doing it for three years. And oh, wow, yeah. He showed up to every single one. Every one of them? Every single one until he got cancer. <laughs> That's so sweet. Like... And he would run the group people and make sure the audiences got sat together. And... Wow. It was very moving. No. Um, yeah, because a lot of people, you know, we know as comedians, people aren't very supportive, especially your friends and family that aren't comics. And you're like, well, to see that he came every time and helped out. <laughs> every single yeah. time. And what did he do for a living? He actually uh, was a, yeah. a big uh, real estate oh, yeah. tycoon. He was yeah. like a flipper. But then the 08 crisis happened. Yeah. And it crashed. And so... Since then, you know, he was trying to recover there. You know, but I brought yeah. him into my businesses. Yeah. So, you know, I have a little business. I, I, I make bubbles at children's parties. Yeah. And I, like, teach people to do that. I do political consulting. Uh, you know, I organize people to go out there and collect signatures. So, yeah, gotta make money have, somehow. Yeah, we all have, like, a thousand jobs. As I say, I, you know, produce people's podcasts and yeah. do all that stuff as well. And, I, you know, do a lot of promo modeling still. And you gotta do what day. you gotta do. It's like, you know, just whatever's an independent contract. Yeah. 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 So that's, that's that's you know, what he did. Yeah. And we really did work together as a team. Yeah. And so, you know, I... I... I okay, wait. We were talking about the medium. Yeah. Right. So the medium... 
told, asked, like said, Michael said, hey, like, without all the drama between the two of you, mm-hmm. would it have been love? Is it love? Mm-hmm. And I lost it on him in like a hotel lobby. I was like, you motherfucker. I took care of you for the last three months. I took three months off of work. And I was there for you. I lived in the fucking hospital for your dumb ass. And you're going to sit on a goddamn cloud and say, oh, I wonder if you love me. Go fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself, Michael. Okay, just because you're dead doesn't make you right, you motherfucker. At the hotel lobby. Um, And of course, everybody's like, you know. And then my friend actually was like, are you sure you want to talk about your dead boyfriend that way? <laughs> and then she said, hmm, Michael says he can't fuck himself because that is a human privilege. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that is what he would say. That uh, smart ass. Yeah. And I was like, maybe she is kind of communicating with him. Uh, and that's a pretty specific thing that see, it is very idiosyncratic. So, like, you know, it's like, you know, you have to believe. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, there's a lot of things that happened since he's passed. I mean, yeah. one of the gr- one of the great things um, that the cancer and the imminent death afforded me was I got to have the time with him yeah. to tell him how much he loved me um, and how much I loved him and we loved each other. Like we, every time we were gonna go to the emergency mm-hmm. room, we we're like, this could be the last time. So let's sit down for an hour and tell each other. Everything that we wanted to say. And um, he, you know, he was, you know, we both really got to put it all out there. Yeah. And uh, it was, it was, it was really an experience. It was, um, and I can honestly say that I, I got to say everything I wanted to say to him. And. Uh, yeah. And not everyone gets to do that. I mean, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. It's. Yeah. You know, it, it like you said. Yeah. It is like a love that had five years and we got to close the chapter. Yeah. And I'm just getting a little emotional here and there. But like, it's not like, you know, disempowered. But like, you know, I do. um, Yeah. You know, it's just like, like you say, it's it's a perfect love story because, you know, it has an ending. I mean, don't every movie we watch has an, an ending in a way like, you know. And uh, you don't just linger on and on like some people. Yeah. Yeah. Where they eventually fall out and then it's no fun. At least y'all were always in love. Yeah. We yeah. were. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, but like, you know, it, it going through all of this. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this whole thing, I would not choose it. Yeah. You know, I, I would give everything... Back, including years, I would give 30 years of my life or 40 years, I would yeah. give whatever to have him back. But that's not an option. No. So I have to look at things positively. I have to look at things bright, right? Like like you said. Um, and I guess, like, in a way, it's made me stronger. It's made me super, like, self-empowered. Like, um, I was in a lot of medical debt yeah. uh, afterwards because everybody should know this about hospitals. Uh, we went to the emergency room and he was in all this like pain uh, and so they put him on like yeah. oxycodone yeah. and they were like okay like you can get this at your pharmacy and they wrote out a prescription for you we go to the first pharmacy and they're like oh I'm sorry we've given away our month's supply and then you go to the second pharmacy and the same thing third Fourth, and you go to the seventh pharmacy and then you run insurance and they don't accept insurance. Yeah. Your partner has now run out of medication in his body because of the, you know, the IV drip that they gave him in the hospital has run out. Now he needs the medication. He's in extreme pain. Do you pay the $1,500? Yeah. Or do you let him suffer? You pay, you pay the, the $1,500. Yeah. So I ended up in like, you know, both of us, like, I ended up in like debt. And I think what happened right after was like, hey, look, I'm going to give myself a project to make me feel mm-hmm. at least empowered and strong through this, you know? And uh, so I decided, like, I'm going to, like, I'm getting out of debt. That's it. I'm getting out of I'm making a decision right now to get out of debt. And so I put that out there. And, like, you know, a friend of mine started a GoFundMe. Yeah. And I got, like, five grand from it. 
And then I got that core political coordinating job, uh-huh. which paid off the rest of it. it was like, I'm out, I'm out of debt now. So, like, it's just, like, kind of, like, I feel, like, um, you know, strong. I feel, like... You feel accomplished. Because, like, hell, I'm in so much debt, it's not even funny. I mean, and only half of it is from, like, my surgery last year. Because, yeah, as I say, hospitals are expensive. and But, you know, you I mean, gotta get that shit out of your head. You gotta... Or whatever it is. It's, it's like, like yeah. they put they put you in a corner. Yeah. yeah. It's like, what are you supposed to do? If you need the medication tonight, if you miss a dose, yeah. you're going to be in extreme pain. Yeah. Um, did you ever look at alternative methods? Uh, yeah. Perfect. Yeah, like um, CBT, uh, CBD. CBD right? oil, yeah. yeah. Dude, I tracked down. Because that's what I used after mine, because I didn't want to take the opiates. Because Did my you do the Rick Simpson oil or what? Um, yeah, well, um, I actually <laughs> used... Um, trying to think of the brand name at the time but i think it was like humboldt apothecary that it was like clearly just medical like tinctures but yeah. right now i've been using um hh hemp companies uh like cbd oil uh that's like an mct oil mix and putting it in your coffee yeah. and then um they even have like if it's like topical like they do um, got the this injectable. magic ball oh wow i tracked down yeah. this guy who, who's a i didn't know professor. they even made those okay it's like experimental. Yeah, and this is so much more affordable and less addicting. And you know, too, with opiates, they're you know they, uh, for severe pain like he had. Like I can imagine, those were probably like the strongest thing you could get. But like it, it and, stopped and, working and, because yeah, as exactly. it went on, it just as opiates kept, do. Yeah, yeah. Like, but with CBD, there is no tolerance. It's not like even the THC. There is no tolerance. So like yeah. you don't have to keep taking more and more and more. No, no, seen. no. Yeah. I, what I was, what I'm saying yeah. is, the CBD oil was, was no no longer effective for the oh, pain. Oh man, yeah, yeah, it got real bad. Yeah. Um. The CBD, we took CBD oil because it has cancer. Uh, yeah. There's been research that chemotherapy alone has eight percent success, yeah. where chemo combined with CBD oil has like twenty something, thirty yeah, something percent. It, it quite increases your chances. And the in the in two, now that hemp has become officially legal in the US, they're able to research this. So maybe the next person you know, and more patients will be getting this better pain medication that's not addicting. Yeah. <laughs> I mean that that'd be great. Yeah. I think there's a lot and I mean I learned so much during this process mm. about you know what? If anybody has health problems or whatever, no. I know a lot now. And how to avoid the pitfalls, you know? Um, you always want to go to, if you are in a situation where you think you're going to need, like, heavy medication, yeah. you always want to check yourself into a hospital that has their own pharmacy. Yeah. Like USC has their own pharmacy. Yeah, I, I have Kaiser Permanente, and, and luckily they have their own pharmacy. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, there are certain things I can't get there. Like, I have to get my B12 shots <laughs> elsewhere. And I medically prescribe B12 shots. Yeah. But, you know, it's crazy. But what you can't get anymore because people use it recreationally. Whether it's opiates or uh, B12 shots. Yeah. yeah. I mean, whatever. Yeah. You know. But, uh, yeah. So, that's the story of Michael, I guess. <laughs> I mean, there's more to it. Yeah. But, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to deal with it. I'm doing great on some levels. I'm yeah. not, I'm not, you know, I'm not perfect on other levels. Well, I mean, so. when you deal with something like that, as I say, it's literally one of the worst things that could happen. The fact that you're here and you're trying to make the best of it is, you know, more than most people do. I mean, as we say, a lot of people, time just stops. And it's like, it's great that you, you know, have this outlook already and, you know, wanted to come do this. Well, you know, I yeah. mean, I'm yeah. glad you invited me. Yeah. You know, I think... Michael uh, really did want me to continue with the comedy. Yeah. And two, uh, look, do, have you seen Patton Oswalt's latest special? No, his yeah. wife died right yes, suddenly. Yes, exactly. So I was like, that's somebody you could perfectly relate to because he woke up and she was dead. That, and they had okay. children and it was just like, wow, like all of a sudden and, you know, it was like a prescription you know, sort of mix up really in a way. She wasn't trying to kill herself. Um, but yeah, it's just, you know, as we go back to this, this can be very dangerous. Yeah, and, your life yeah. could change like that yeah. at any moment. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it makes you appreciate yeah. what you have, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah, because, you know, he woke up one day. You had the three months, and like you say, you got to say everything you wanted to say, and, yeah. 
Cool. Did you hear about... Was it Nate Burkus? The home design guy? The gay one? Well, the gay home design guy? Yeah. Which, I mean, I they're, all like, gay. Like, they're all gay. They're all gay home design. Right on HGTV. No, he I'm like, a, let me a, look it up. I'm like, oh. I'm like, His I'm boyfriend like, died. Really? From like a hurricane. That's crazy. And died suddenly. And did not have a chance to say goodbye or whatever, you know? That's crazy. I know. I'm like, let me go look this up because I'm like, it's crazy. What happened? Nate Burgess? So, yeah. like, a, a hurricane or yeah, a storm or something? Yeah. Like, I did not hear that. And it was, like, in 2016. I think. What? Really? Or Yeah, it was or 2004. I was like, oh. uh, this article was in 2016 about his husband. Yeah, in 2004, Nate's partner was killed in the devastating tsunami during their visit to Sri Lanka. Wow. Well, that's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and actually, uh, the medium... Another medium. Okay, yeah. so when when your friend dies, when when, yeah. you, when you and your friends find out that your boyfriend died or something in Los Angeles, yeah. they just buy you a session with a medium. It's Los Angeles. That's what they do. Yeah, that's what LA. They always send you to a psychic or something. Yeah, but there's one down the street for ten bucks. Have you gone? <laughs> no. Do you believe in psychics? I I believe like like psych level. Did you ever watch that show on no. USA? Like it's one of my favorite shows cuz I'm a little like that. I uh -huh. pick up on things. I have a little bit of intuition. Do you? Um and like, you know, cuz yeah, I'll have dreams sometimes and then they come true. Like, you know, huh. nothing too but in like that level of psychic, I believe. A lot of these people I'm like, I don't know, like um I have to tell you yeah. about the yeah. craziest psych Okay, mm -hmm. so in April <laughs> I'd never met this guy. My mom calls. My Okay, first of all, my mom likes to pretend like gay doesn't exist. She likes to pretend like I'm asexual. So she sets me up with this Korean guy and gives him my photo <laughs> and my time of birth and uh, my, um, uh, my name. My name, my time <laughs> of birth, <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, my photo. And he looks at it and he brought a 20-page report to our meeting. And I opened it. <laughs> That's so Asian. <laughs> it's so, right? It's so, and it, all in Korean. Print yeah. it out. <clears throat> I open it. It's crazy. This was mid-April. Oh. He did not know about Michael. This is oh. what it said. I, I had just turned 33. Mm. And he said, okay, at 32, you had a very disturbing, uh, some some something happened. Some very uh, something b bad, but don't worry. By the end of May, it'll resolve itself. And in June, you will go up north where you will make a lot of money. And I was like, I heard that, and I was like, the, does I was still taking care of Michael? Yeah. I was like, does this mean Michael's gonna die at the end of May? Michael died at the end of May, and I ended up working in Washington State for the political wow. campaign where I made like. The money. So, that's insane to me. Yeah. Like, that's, that is that's cra pretty that's crazy. dead on. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, I mean, I went to San Francisco because I wanted to get away. And I was like, is this what he meant by a lot of money? Because I'm not really making a lot of money. And then I got a call from that day, Washington State, saying, hey, we could use your help in the political campaign. I know you just lost your boyfriend, but if you want to come, you're welcome. So, I went and did it. And, I mean... Well, That's pretty dead on, right? Yeah, I'm like that. And that's you want to meet him? You can meet him. Yeah. I'll like, take you to yeah. Korean food. What I like yeah. to do for my friends, yeah, is to take them. You like Korean people? Oh my god, I love Korean people and food and spas, all of it. Oh great! I was at KCON all weekend. Hey, <laughs> so I I take my girlfriends or my yeah. boyfriend, whatever, to a Korean lunch. Yeah. With his name is Mokcho. Mokcho. Oh. Mm -hmm. He has a white streak in his hair. He's very wise looking. I have to meet this person. I you have characters. to. He's, yeah. and he will sit there and he will look at your face and he'll be like, mm, like you, like he told my friend, yeah, I got, I, you know, yeah. brought my friend to meet him. And he said, you have, um, kidneys that are fat around it, which is causing you to retain weight. You have to stop drinking. And she's like, I do drink a lot and I do have a hard time keeping weight off. He might say that to me, too. <laughs> he sees illnesses. Yeah. Like, Whoa. it's crazy. So, anyway, you gotta meet him. 
Yeah, I know. I'm like, I'm very intrigued by this person. I'm like, I am definitely in. Yeah, he's so Korean. Yeah. He does not even speak a word of English. Like, not not even like... <laughs> I, uh, I can't uh, speak Korean. Can you like, can, I could say cup. Yeah. I wouldn't know what cup is. No. Like, just nothing. Not a, not anything. So, he's a character. Yeah. Yeah. So, it, uh, you know, I made a new friend because he kind of yeah. helped me through this process too. And, uh, you know, my mom, uh, I became closer to my mom. Which is always good. As yeah. you say, you were never very close before. No, we were close. Yeah. It's just, oh, yeah. you know. Just awkward, yeah. Koreans just have a way yeah. of avoiding things they don't want to face sometimes. And. Koreans and, uh, you know. Everybody. People, I was like, I was like, why people are like that too? Uh, and certain wasp. The, you know. It's like avoidant. Yeah. It's like, we don't want to deal with our problems. Yeah. yeah. So. But I find that leaning into your problems yeah. is better. So, yeah. Yeah. I know. So, you know, you... Again, the last few uh, episodes I've had, it's been more just people that are perfect uh, for this show because we're actually really just doing it as therapy. A lot of this other has been, like, goofy, like, trying to talk about, like, ska music or bad movies or stuff. So I'm like, uh, yeah, I thank you again. For coming in and, you know, this was such a good episode. I'm like, this is exactly what it needs to be, is, is therapy. Yeah. 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 It's, ther it's therapy. I love it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yay. Thank you so much for having me. And I'm yeah. going to finish eating these and take yeah. a few bags of chips. <laughs> of course. Um, do you have any upcoming shows you want to plug? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so when is this coming out? Uh, this will be out next Tuesday. Okay. So that'll be um, August... 21st. So August 21st yeah. is the date of my uh, Rainbow Pop Lab oh, wow, show. Yeah. Uh, August 20, August 29th is Long Beach Laugh Factory. Mm -hmm. I'll be headlining San Diego Comedy Heights that weekend. I think August 31st and September 1st. Labor Day weekend, yeah. 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 Cool. So that should be a good show. Yeah. yeah. We'll see. Huh? Uh -huh. Yeah. And I'll be doing my Dead Boyfriend material, so... <laughs> Who doesn't love Dead Boy Farm and Tarot right now? <laughs> uh, you know what? Yeah. I bombed so hard on Wednesday with it. Oh, really? I, at the Laugh Factory, oh, yeah. you know, people can handle it more. Yeah. Then I, I went to the Van Nuys Comedy Club. <laughs> yeah. Or Spring Bock or whatever you want to call it. I went there and they... Uh, <laughs> Mm. <laughs> yeah. I know there are just some crowds. There's a reason I never perform in Silver Lake. <laughs> yeah, like, they don't yeah. like happy people. Ha! <laughs> well, they don't like people who have a voice that isn't theirs and that's authentic. Because um, yeah, it's like this is my name. I it, it's a black name, and that's the joke. Don't take it too seriously. I didn't. <laughs> like, These social yeah. justice warriors. Oh, I know. I'm so like, glad we're on that same page. There are a bunch of. I said PC stands for pussies and cunts. Oh my god. Uh, yep. And then like they preach to me about. Yeah. I'm like, I know. do not preach to me about oh, yeah. this. Okay. Please. <laughs> I well, actually, in fact, I dare you. Go ahead, tell me I'm being politically incorrect. Ridiculous. Yeah, and that's my thing. Is like they try to tell us that our comedy isn't right when it shouldn't be offending them. It's like. I'm sorry. Do, do you have a dead boyfriend? Do you have a black name? Then shut up. <laughs> Are, Are you black? gay? Yeah. Are you an undocumented yeah. immigrant? Did yeah. you grow up in government housing? Did you grow up in the ghetto? Yeah. Then go fuck yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So but, anyway. I know. It's, uh -huh. like, it's like, where can they keep up the fun conversation with you on social media? Yay. Like, It'll be fun. Yeah. I'm excited. Yeah. It was so great to meet you. You had such a great energy mm -hmm. when I saw yeah. I met you in the parking lot. Well, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes you meet people in the parking lot and it turns out great, right? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, what's your social tag? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, at Aiden Park yeah, Show. Cool. So A-I-D-A-N. My name is spelled weird. A-I-D-A-N. You're telling me. <laughs> yeah. No. yeah. It's Lucretia L-A, right? Yeah. Uh, my mom didn't want me to be called Lulu. Um, so it's L-A. Good so for her. Yeah. yeah. Aiden Park yeah. Show. Yeah. So uh, yeah, find nice me on easy. Instagram, <laughs> Facebook, all the all of them. Yeah, my like, cool. Since I'm Lucretia Lyon, guys, you can always find me at L A C R E T I A L Y O N anywhere on the internet. Since there is only one. See you next Tuesday. So there's this new podcast you guys should totally be listening to. It's called Dead Inside. It's got myself, Lucretia Lyon, and.
Jacqueline Passaro. And we talk about a lot of effed up stuff. That uh, you'll absolutely enjoy and laugh at, like murder. And uh, serial killers. And um, we speak with other comics, and we talk to other t- different types of personalities. Yeah, and personality disorders. That um, we point out in other people and in ourselves. Because we're full of it. <laughs> Yeah, so guys, Dead Inside has new episodes every Tuesday on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, iHeartRadio, and Spotify.